Smartphones now outnumber people on Earth. And the result is information overload. According to the Aspen Institute, we will input five times as much data each day this year than we did in 1987. Every day we are faced with approximately 100,000 written words from various sources. According to neuroscientist Daniel Levitin, this is a stunning and impossible to process 35 gigabytes of information. Each day in its, fast, uh, in its factoring our attention into little itty bitty pieces, so we are never paying full attention to one thing. But one thing deserves our full attention, the voice of the Lord. The psalmist said, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Psalm 27, 4. Jesus told Martha, One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, referring to her time sitting at his feet and listening to his words. Luke ten forty two. Amid the flood of gigabytes, we mustn't forget one thing, the God who speaks to us in an age of information overload we need the revelation from above. Nothing is more important than hearing the voice of the Almighty. But how does God speak to us? You might be surprised at the variety of ways he spoke in ancient times. He spoke audibly from heaven, Matthew 3:17. He wrote with his finger, Exodus 31:18 and John 8:6. He used the mouths of angels, Genesis 19:15. Of babes, Psalm 8:2 and on one occasion of a donkey, Numbers twenty two twenty eight. In John 12, God spoke from heaven, and while Jesus heard every word, others thought it had thundered, John twelve twenty nine. God communicates through the beauty of his creation, for since the beginning of the creation of the world, his invisible uh, attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. In the Bible, God spoke through dreams and revelations, Daniel 7, 1. Through circumstances, Esther 4.14. Through miracles, signs, and wonders, Acts 2.22. Through weather, Job 38.1. Through songs, Deuteronomy 31.22. Through fiery sermons, Amos 1.1-2. 1, 1 through, through the written word, Jeremiah 36.1-2. through 2. And don't forget the still small voice, 1 Kings 19.12. In his book, He is Not Silent, Al Moiler points out that in the Old Testament, phrases like, The Lord said, the Lord spoke, and the word of the Lord came, appear at least 3,808 times. Throughout history, God has always showed up and communicated his will. And by the way, that fact alone makes the Bible stand apart. It's like no other book. It's like no religious book or fake book full of fallacies and things. The Bible is pure, infallible, perfect, true, always accurate. Whenever it mentions anything, it is dynamic. It changes lives. It's outstandingly amazing. And if you've heard anything different, well, people are lying to you because the Bible is unmatched. It's undefeatable. It's un like it's not you can't discredit it. You can't get rid of it. You can't disprove it. It's perfect. This demonstrates how much he wants a relationship with us. In the first chapters of scripture, we read about his walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, fellowshipping with them, longing to be with them, Genesis 3.8. In the last chapters of the Bible, believers are taught to anticipate their literal presence with God in New Jerusalem, where he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Revelation 21.3. In order for that to happen, Jesus Christ came to earth, Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew one twenty three. The Apostle John called him the Word, John one one. According to Hebrews one one through two, Jesus is heaven's supreme communication, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. A relationship without communication is futile. God has something to say to you, and he has many ways of delivering the message. His inspired and authoritative communication is the Bible, and he will never violate his word. But the application of that word comes to us in many forms, through our study of scripture, through sermons, through books, through testimonies, through impressions in our hearts as the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the words of friends and sometimes enemies, and through the observation of his incredible created universe. Throughout history, God has always showed up and communicated his will. One thing deserves our full attention, the voice of the Lord. This issue here by David Jeremiah examines crucial ways in which God speaks to each of us through his word, through others, through circumstances, and through silence. Just as a safe cracker tunes his 
ear to hear the tumbles of a lock, or a musical conductor trains his ear to hear the piccolo, so we need to train our ears to never miss a sound when God speaks. As the boy Samuel said, speak, for your servant hears. 1 Samuel 3.10 I hope you'll read these pages carefully and share them with someone else, because as you read this issue, God just might be speaking to you. And the most important thing he wants to communicate, first of all, is the gospel, the way you can be saved. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Jesus shed his blood, for without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins, the Bible says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And when Jesus died on that cross and took every person's sin on himself by being in our place on the cross as a human being, perfect and holy in our place, he paid our price. He paid our penalty. He bought us back. And now we can simply go to heaven if we ask him to save us and be our savior and forgive us forever and believing he is the son of God who died on the cross and rose again in our place. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans ten nine says, If we conf- if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you just basically believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Lord. And it says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you ask him in prayer right now to save you from your sins, confessing you're a sinner and confessing that you believe Jesus is the Son of God eternal who died on the cross and rose again in your place, he will save you. He promised to never leave you nor forsake you and to always be with you. And he promised that whom the Son has made free, he shall be free indeed. Do you believe? Do you want to be saved? Will you call out to him even now while you have the chance? Grab his hand. Ask him to save you. Don't delay. He wants to save you. Will you let him?